Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video by Trending Reviews. So here's another video on my Villar series. So this one I'm going to cover you the top 5 things that I think are wrong about the Ranger of a Villar. And when I say wrong, I don't mean things that are broken or that just doesn't work. But just the tiny little nuisances that people that are maybe thinking about buying the Villar, they need to be aware of. I didn't know about these things before I bought it, but they could be very tiny things. For some people, they don't matter at all. I still think this is one of my favorite cars that I'm going to be driving for a very long time. It's such a beautiful car. It's very smooth to drive. These are just tiny things which I think do make a difference to some people, not all people. But it's something to be aware of because these are the things I've not come across in previous cars I've had. So hopefully you guys find this video useful. So let's just get straight into it. You need a high throne where you can be adored. You'll get what you Okay, so in no particular order, number one, I think the responsiveness of the Velar screen in terms of using like the satellite navigation or things like turning the volume up, just simple things like that, I think it's a little bit slow to respond. In some of the cars I've had, it's just instant. So when you're pressing buttons, when you're turning navigation on, you're doing a search, you're turning the volume up on the radio, those tiny things, I've noticed a difference immediately on day one when I first bought this car. I've noticed it takes up to a second, sometimes a little bit more to actually get the feedback on the actual screen compared to the time you actually press the button. So if I just show you an example now. So here's the screen. I'm going to press the navigation button here to load up the navigation so you guys can take a look. There you go. And it's a little bit slow, not too bad. I mean, you can get used to it when you're just navigating around, you're pressing these buttons. You can see there's a slight delay if I go home that's a little bit quicker now I do understand that this is a very heavy software based screen LCD screen that you don't get in most cars especially older cars um, some of them are very analog based and not very digital so they are different in speeds but some of the other cars I've experienced that have LCD screens just like this that are packed with software packed with latest navigations I've not come across the speed issues with that so even if I'm pressing the volume button on here if I turn the radio on try to see how quickly the uh, volume changes over here at the top by the time I press this now I don't know if you saw that clearly but if you see the time I press the button using my thumb here the time the volume came up and actually changed the volume it was about a second and I think that's just a little bit too slow and uh, it can get a bit of a nuisance from uh, time to time. So number two is the volume of the uh, indicators. I think it's a little bit louder on uh, some of the other cars I've had it's more silent and it, this one just becomes a little bit annoying especially when you're sitting in traffic you don't have any music on it's just so loud and it keeps ticking so I'm just going to signal and try to hear how loud the signal noise is. For me, I just think that's too loud. It's the loudest signal noise I've had in any car. And um, it's something you can get used to. Maybe you've got the music a little bit louder. You can drown that out. But for me, it's not that ideal. Number three is the position of the USB ports. Now they are inside this uh, cabin bit here, so which is absolutely fine. They need to be a little bit hidden. But the wires that come out, you just see there's wires coming all over the place sometimes they actually get trapped there's a specific place right in the middle here that you actually need to put the wires in for the USB cables and they need to come out from the middle now that's also fine but the main issue with this is the positions of where you're going to be charging the devices through the USB port now if I want to charge my phone I put my phone here on the magnetic holder and I'll put the USB cable there in the phone and then all of a sudden you have this wire that goes over the screen and it goes all the way into there and then you just have wires everywhere. Now, in my previous car, I had the USB port just next to my screen or just under my screen here. And then I had plenty of space to put my phone next to it, unobtrusive of the actual screen. So I've yet to find the perfect place to charge via the wire and have the phone in a very good position. Now, some people have said they can put the phone behind the screen here, which is fine. It can do that, but it keeps falling over if you put it like that. So like that, it's 
it's there but you can't see any calls coming in you can't see the notifications that you're getting and I'd rather not hide the phone I'd rather see the phone and uh, see what happens on the screen if I do get any notifications that way so it's not the best place for uh, design wise on phone positions so that's one of the reasons why I think maybe they should have had like a USB port up here somewhere where you can just get the small cable to charge directly from next to the vents Number four is the uh, navigation system inbuilt into the uh, Velar. Now, I've had a uh, good experience using this, but there's been so many cases that the navigation has not been perfect. I've had cases this past weekend where it's routed me through diversions and uh, taken me into different routes just to bring me back on the same road, which basically is not blocked or it doesn't have any roadworks and was clear the whole time. So maybe it's not picking up traffic indications correctly or it's not taking the latest roads but I'm actually talking about roads that have been there for many many years for 10 20 years and have not changed and for some reason it's avoiding those main roads taking me down little side roads and coming back onto the same main road which was empty to begin with which adds on a lot of unnecessary time but in addition for applications and sat navs for like ways for example they're very good at picking up the um, obstructions, the roadworks, traffic, all that kind of stuff where this one does have the uh, traffic data inbuilt. It can detect what's coming up, but it's very bad at predicting alternative routes for it. Now, the problem with that is this past weekend is again, it's taken me through all the routes that do have diversions and are very heavily trafficked. I spoke to a friend who met me at the same location who was using Waze and he got to the venue half an hour before I did and uh, that's because of my Velar navigation and it did that twice on the same day so I was very disappointed so I switched to using Waze um, after that so the trust in this navigation is not ideal for me so for me I think I could definitely use an upgrade to this for uh, future versions on this software and last but not least number five I've read various articles online saying Land Rover Jaguar Land Rover itself has been ranked towards the bottom of reliability um, so I haven't had any issues so far in terms of driving the car and the reliability of the Velar itself but for the customer service from uh, Land Rover themselves I am a little bit disappointed so I know there's a, a version update a software update available for this car so I'm on a slightly older one which doesn't have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and that kind of stuff so I called up the customer service and I wanted to book in an upgrade to the software. I used to do that with my previous cars, I've done it for my Mercedes and for my Chrysler. I've managed to get software updates anytime I want, I just have to pay a little bit extra if I want to do it ad hoc outside of a service plan. So I asked the uh, Land Rover guys can I get this updated so that I can have Apple CarPlay inbuilt into this system and um, they basically said to me outright that there's no option to update the software unless there's a fault in the existing software so for me that was a little bit strange because there's they didn't even offer to charge me an uh, additional cost to update the software if that's something they can do so the problem with that is now I have to be stuck on this old software and I can't update until it breaks now that's a little bit weird because I've never experienced that with any other car maybe that's what people are talking about in terms of the reliability of Land Rover themselves so I'm quite disappointed I don't know when I can get CarPlay I've offered to pay just to update my software I've offered to come in if it's a 10 minute 20 minute 30 minute job I don't mind they can do it I'll leave the car with them but no they were adamant they didn't want to update it because they only have a procedure to update on either new builds when you're buying it online you can buy the latest version from that or when your screen is like breaking and the software is not working properly so kind of stuck in that situation but if you guys have any advice on how I can get this updated then do let me know in the comments below I would really appreciate that so that's it guys I hope that was a very useful quick top five things that are wrong with this Range Rover Velar if you have anything else that you experienced with this car that you'd like to mention then let everyone know down below otherwise if you have questions about the vehicle itself then I'm happy to answer them and uh, I hope you guys like that. I'll leave a, a link for the playlist of all my other Villar videos down below as well. And I hope you guys like this video. Subscribe and I will see you guys at the next one. Take care.